Hey guys, it's Alex Gutierrez. If you're watching this, it probably means I'm dead. <laughs> I'm just kidding now. Still alive, still alive for now. Um, but this video will be about death because uh, death is all around us. Death is all around us. <laughs> so today's Ash Wednesday and Normally you'll see people <laughs> the parking lot's gonna be full for mass. I just um, came back from mass. It's late. So that's why I'm speaking more quietly and It's a day that I really like I I love the it's the beginning of Lent So 40 days that we're gonna go through to be in the desert And it's not a day of holy obligation, but it's great to see that so many people come but what they say when they mark you with with the cross is uh repent and believe in the gospel and that i think is one of the things where it's intense it's like we're gonna die and it, repent now it sounds like almost those things that you don't want to say like oh repent and the end is near like you don't want to you don't want to say that right off the bat um you don't want to ever scare anyone like that but then this is a day where it's like whoa like death could come for us at any moment and i like it i like that that it's intense um the second phrase that i that comes to mind is uh, ashes to ashes or uh, you are dust and to dust you shall return which is what i thought i used to hear in spanish when they put the ashes on you but maybe i'm wrong uh because i thought it was Pol polvo eres y en polvo te convertirás so same thing remember that you are dust and you will return to dust. And in French, it would be um, tu es poussière et tu retourneras dans la poussière. And this is from Genesis 3.19. And it's it's when God is telling Adam, or yeah, just what's that's what's going to happen. So that's what we're made of. And it's we're going to die. Um, which is also why, uh, as I saw in a Father Mike, Schmidt, Father Mike Schmidt's video, that there used to be saints that would say, or the phrase that would be common, and people would greet each other, saints would be uh, memento mori, memento mori, which means uh, you're going to die, or remember your death, remember that you're going to die. And people would have different things to remind them, uh, such as a skull. A lot of saints would have skulls on their desk. I happen to have one, <laughs> so hopefully I become a saint. No, um, this obviously is just a a Dia de los Muertos or like a souvenir. But I do have it on there, and I hadn't thought about uh, connecting it that way. Uh, but I like the idea of constantly thinking about your death. Uh, not in a bad way, but in a sense that it lets you live more freely you live your life to the max and it's not a yolo either like do whatever you want it's live to glorify god live to do the right thing ask yourself that question am i am i glorifying god with my actions and with what i'm doing something else i really like about this and and just in general about being catholic is that we don't have to be afraid of death there's nothing to fear because jesus has conquered death and it's 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 everywhere since baptism we have it's a reminder of our own death we, we died and we are new whether it was as an infant or as an adult uh, baptism wipes original sin when you uh, when you get confirmed the bishop lays hands on you and the lay, the imposition of the hands or the laying of hands uh, goes to the old testament where they used to separate the animals that they would slaughter that they were going to slaughter that's how they would mark them and so literally they would set them apart and setting apart means that's the definition of holy so for us they put that indelible mark on you when you get confirmed so it's a mark that can't be seen but can't be ever taken away and that uh yeah that 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 reminds you that okay you're you're going to die you're going to be killed and of course, like Jesus was the lamb that was uh, sacrificed. And then there's same thing for when in marriage, there's the, the groom, he wears 
black to signify that, okay, I'm, I'm dying to myself. The groom is dying to himself and to his future family. He's dying to his needs and his wants, his desires. And he's going to basically unite himself to his wife and and not be selfish. Same thing with priests. They wear black because they've died and they have this constant reminder that this they all Catholics and all Christians really is you're not living for yourself anymore. You don't belong. Your life is not yours. Your life is God's and you are going to live for him. And so that's something I really like about about Catholicism in general. And it reminded me of a, it's a silly video, but it, it was from, um, someone did a, it's called Dear Reader. And they just like narrated Harry Potter, but in a funny way. And it reminded me of this clip. So let's watch. Yes, they crash each other as the snitch leads them. They, the snitch leads them straight down, straight down into certain doom. Yes, they're going to crash, but Harry loves death. He says, bring it on. <laughs> yeah, so Harry's going down. He's going to die. He's going into straight doom, but Harry loves death. And that's what I think is Catholics love death. We love death because we, we it's everywhere. It, it, all our symbols, our sacraments, everything is about it. Even when we go and uh, enter the church and just dip your hands into the baptismal font and do the sign of the cross, uh, you're dipping in your you're remembering oh yeah i was baptized which means oh yeah who i was before is dead and now i'm someone else and ultimately like today with the with the with the ashes it's um the ashes are symbol are, are telling us yeah like we're gonna die but also we are sinners they're a mark they're like we're sinners but we've been saved and that's why we're not afraid of anything because we have a savior, because we have Jesus, and because he showed us the way, and because we ideally are trying to live the, to the best of our ability the way that Jesus taught us, and in accordance with the teachings of the Catholic Church, the church he established. And last thing that I really like about Ash Wednesday, and I normally don't do this, but you know, I'm wearing black, and I decided, you know what, like, let me just... I really want to think about this and, and contemplate my death and rem remind myself. And so, yeah, that's not a typical thing. People don't normally do that. It's uh, purple, it's Lent. Um, but I did think, oh yeah, like black, the priest, the groom for a wedding. Let me, let me think about that. And let me, it's almost like I dressed up for my funeral. It's like, here's what you're going to bury me in if I'm not cremated. And uh, something about it is like, okay, like, you're willingly accepting your death, which is what Jesus did. He did not, we didn't kill him. We did not kill God. He willingly accepted the will of his father, submitted to that will. And, and that brought about the salvation. And of course, Jesus is God, second person of the Trinity. But that's the model that we need to follow is we, it's a different thing to say, oh, so like death surprised me, something happened and death came for me like the green reaper no it's more like i've been waiting for you like uh even kind of like harry potter there where like he welcomed the guy with the invisibility cloak he welcomed death like an old friend it's like oh i've been waiting for you i know who you are um something like that that's more like folk tale but yeah just to willingly say here i am and i'm, I'm laying down my life for my family for my friends and i'm giving this life to you jesus and i want to live the way you want me to live So that's on Ash Wednesday. And now I want to talk about something that it's still related, uh, but it's actually what made me want to do this video. I was listening to a song and I really like this song. It's on a playlist. Uh, if you ever watch The O.C., then you'll recognize the song immediately and you will know that this is the song from the season finale and the last scene in the last episode. Now, I won't spoil anything. It's a <laughs> good show if you want to watch it. And... I was listening to it and I thought, wow, this is what a great song for the beginning of Lent because that's what we're about to go to. So I'm just going to pick out some of the parts of the lyrics and to give my thoughts. Now, I could be completely wrong. Like, I don't know the... So it's the, the song is called Life is a Song by Patrick Park. I don't know if the song was meant to be 
I don't know if he's a Christian, a Catholic. I don't know if he's uh, atheist or that he he could be against it, but whatever. If I like the song, this is what I got from it. And we can always just baptize it like this is. <laughs> we'll just make it ours. Um, so yeah, it's called Life is a Song. Uh, so one part that I like, it says, Maybe life is a song, but you're scared to sing along. I like that because it's maybe life is like a song and it's playing but you're not participating you're not singing and so you're not living fully and that's not what jesus wants us to do so maybe life is a song but you're scared to sing along until the very ending now maybe you are singing but you don't want to sing until the very end you don't like the end most people want to live but they don't want to live up until the end or until when it gets hard or suffering comes in or to face their death. And that's, what, again, what I like about Ash Wednesday is that you're facing your death. You're saying kind of like uh, St. Paul in Corinthians when he says, uh, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? Like we can mock death. And same thing with the Dia de los Muertos is that, yeah, <sighs> We, I remember even growing up, like you would write calaveritas, like you would write like these, like poems essentially about death, but it's in a, in a humorous way. Uh, some would rhyme and, and it was all just about like mocking death. And Mexico is great because we can just make fun of anything. Uh, and the fact that we can, that death is a joke to us. Like it's a joke, it's a joke. And to Catholics even more because of this, not because of any reason, not because it's not serious and like, not because losing someone isn't hard, but because dying is not the worst thing that could happen to you. Eternal damnation is probably the worst thing that could happen. That would be, you're talking about your eternal place for your soul. Uh, but death is not the end. Jesus showed us that. So it goes on. It's time to let go of everything we used to know. I think that's great. And that's, that's kind of the chorus. And I think of Lent, it's like, it's time to let go of all the things that you think you know or that you that have just been consuming your time and your energy and that might not be leading you anywhere. Ideas that strengthen who we've been. So now, this sounds like it's positive, but I read it more like, well, I couldn't, I didn't look up the lyrics. I heard it as ideas of strength and who we've been. Either way, uh, it could be that you're very strong at something that just, but it's not a good thing. It could be a vice. Um, so yeah, who we've been. Again, you've been someone, but now it's time to... Well, that's the next line. It's time to cut ties that won't ever free our minds from the chains and shackles that they're in. So it's acknowledging that we are in chains and shackles. And now obviously to me that speaks about sin. Sin is what keeps us prisoners essentially and that's why jesus came to, to free us but just because he came doesn't mean that we don't have free will and that we can't choose to do the wrong thing the devil's still trying to tempt us so i like this it's this is the perfect time it's the perfect lent song for me it's it's the we're about to enter 40 days in the desert where get rid of those chains get rid of those things that are holding you back get rid of the sin obviously you should always get rid of the sin but then also maybe some other things that are not bad in themselves um, that could be neutral, but that are taking you away from God or, or that are not letting you experience God in a more full, um, way. And then it goes on. Tell me what good is it? Tell me what good is saying that you're free in a dark and storming sea. So that tells me, yeah, there's a lot of people who think, oh, well, I can do whatever I want and I'm doing, I'm living life and I'm doing whatever I want. But that's not really freedom. Freedom doesn't mean doing whatever you want. Freedom is doing the right thing. And sometimes even while doing whatever you want, it actually is worse than you feel you're a prisoner, whether you realize it or not. Uh, so if you're in a dark and stormy sea, then what's the point? If, you, if you're if you're all in the middle of all this vice, then what's the point uh, if you call yourself free? You're chained to your history and you're surely sinking fast. Yeah, so um, again, I'm thinking about like long list of uh, past sins or just 
things that are holding you back that are not letting you be virtuous. You say that you know that the good Lord's in control. That's good. I like it. He is. He's going to bless and keep your tired and oh so restless soul. True. But at the end of the day, when every price has been paid, you're going to rise and sit beside him on some old seat of gold. Now, I don't know about the old part, but I do like the part about he's blessing us. Uh, God's the one. Jesus is the one that's the Lord. Um, and he is going to take care of our souls. And that once everything is said and done at the end of the day, al final de cuentas, um, we're going to be with him, hopefully, in the banquet of heaven, the wedding feast. So I don't know if it's a seat of gold. I mean, we do know Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. But in this case, yeah, we there's going to be a seat for us at the table. And we're going to be participating in this banquet, and it's going to be great. And then it says, Then won't you tell me why you live like you're afraid to die? And I think that's that's a really good line. Like, Well, then tell me. If this is all true, if Jesus is who he is, and if the good Lord's in control and all this, then tell me, why are you living like you're afraid to die? We shouldn't be living like that. You'll die like you're afraid to go. And then it's like affirming that it's, it's, it's in the future. It's saying, you're going to die. And when you do, you're going to be afraid. It's as if you're afraid to pass away. But the beautiful thing about Ash Wednesday or uh, recognizing the sacraments in front of us or just contemplating uh, our own lives and, and eventual death is that you're facing it every day. So it's not a surprise. And like, oh, I didn't know that my life would come to an end at some point. It's like, oh, no, memento mori. Like, you were ready. It's going to happen. Then there's two lines that maybe, you know, that's where it could be. The song could be about something else. It talks about dreams. Won't get into that. But then the two last lines I love. And we build our house of cards. And then we wait for it to fall. I always forget how strange it is just to be alive at all. And you got to listen to the song because it, it just, it rhymes and it sounds so like, like it closed everything. And if you saw the OC, it's like, oh man, like it closed old chapters and opens a new one. And so the building our house of cards is, yeah, everything that we've built, everything that we've like arranged on earth that we think that is the most important thing and that we're not going to be able to take to heaven. We're, we're just building all these things and you shouldn't, uh, it's in the Bible, but I can't quote it right now. Just the whole stack up your treasures, like prepare your treasures for heaven, not things that are going to stay here. And so, yeah, that'll be like a house of cards. Uh, and then, well, that's not going to last. And I remember a priest actually gave a homily on Ash Wednesday a couple years back saying what essentially Jesus said where he said, you see this church, you look around, you see all these pillars, you see this beautiful, like everything's great. And look at us, we're, we're enjoying all this, but it's all going to be gone. It's all going to be gone. Just like Jesus said, you see this temple, it's going to be destroyed. And nobody believed it. And then he said, you know, I'll, I'll raise it on the third day and what he meant, obviously, was he was talking about his body. But, yeah, just, I remember that priest saying, like, everything that we have is just, look around. You're not taking any of that. It's all going to be gone. And so it's, it's kind of good to feel like, whew, you can just remove things that you don't need, focus on the essentials, and still have fun, still enjoy uh, what God gave us and use our gifts and our talents and uh, love our family and friends. But not, but know that everything, well, like nothing is above God, obviously. And then the last line, it's just, I don't know, I just really, it's just great. <laughs> I always forget how strange it is to just to be alive at all. Just the fact that we even have life. Like, why are we here? And why is there something versus nothing? I always forget how strange it is just to be alive at all. Which is why I also like, I'm not the, I'm trying to be better at this, but just the whole praying in the morning saying god like thank you for a new day like 
I'm not promised anything. I'm not guaranteed to be here. I'm not guaranteed life. But every day when we wake up, it's, wow, thank you. Thank you for, again, I have life. I'm still here. Thank you for the gift of life that you've given me. And yeah, how strange it is that we're here and at the current time period that you live in with the people you've met, with the family, with the circumstances, everything has been, for better or worse, it's been, um, it's been placed for a reason. And that doesn't mean we're, it's not, I'm not talking about predestination, but there is a plan for our lives. And just the fact that, wow, it's very strange to be alive. And then as St. Irenaeus says, that's a quote I really like, the glory of God is man fully alive. So we want to be fully alive. God wants us to be fully alive. And to be fully alive, you have to face your death. You have to say memento mori. You have to not be afraid. And once you do that, if you live like that, wow. And I'm telling this to myself too, but that's, that's when you're really free and that's where nothing can hold you back. And on that note, uh, yeah, I think I will end this video. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. See you guys next time.